Hello, my name's Brian. I'm here to tell you about something that happened to me a few weeks ago. But first a question. Isn't it truly amazing that your life can be turned upside down in just one-tenth of a second? It can. And soon, you'll find out why. Let's not bore you with a lot of details about my life. I'll cut to the chase. I was born in New York 23 years ago, and growing up, I was always somewhat of a child prodigy. I studied at Columbia and finished my physics degree with honors last year. During the summer, I arranged interviews with several universities, hoping I'd get into a decent PhD program. And in the end, I was chosen by the best. Professor Silva at Berkeley offered me the chance to do my doctoral studies at the applied physics department he runs there. It was a dream come true. I packed my bags and got ready to move to California. I was ready to drive from coast to coast without stopping. I had no idea of the events that would take place within just a few days. About the mess I was going to get in. Strange people about to cross my path. The hundreds of dangers lurking behind every corner. Yes, it was quite an adventure. Go back to the beginning. As I told you, my old car and I were ready to go to California. I decided to take off at night and get a few miles behind me before dawn. I said goodbye to my parents, my sister, and my dog, and I got behind the wheel. That's when I remembered I forgot to pick up a book I'd ordered at a bookshop downtown in Manhattan. Luckily, it was one of those bookstores that stays open 24-7, so I decided to grab the book on the way. I could have asked them to mail it to me once I got to California, but uh, no, I decided to go into Manhattan and get it myself. That one detour changed my life forever. Oh my god! Stay away. It's better if they don't see us. She's unconscious. I'm taking her to the hospital. We'll take care of her at the hospital. Maybe that moron did the dirty work for us and she's already dead. Maybe, but we better make sure. It 
did. I'm telling you. On the way to the bookshop, I hit that girl with my car. I was scared stiff. She suddenly ran out in front of me. There was no way I could stop. Luckily for both of us, she wasn't that badly hurt. They did a bunch of tests on her at the hospital and said she had no major injuries. She was just in shock. So they decided to keep her under observation for 24 hours. A nurse took her to a room and gave her some strong medicine that put her to sleep. By the way, I, I don't know if I mentioned it, the girl's name was Gina, and she was amazingly beautiful. The truth is, I had no reason to stick around, so I went to say goodbye to her and go on my way. Please, don't leave. They want to kill me. There, there. Calm down. It's all over now. I hit you with my car, but you're fine. You're in a hospital recovering from... No, I'm telling you, they want me dead. I've got to get out of here. Who were they? Please, calm down and tell me why you think they want to murder you. Something awful happened tonight, and I witnessed the whole thing. Look, I'm a singer. I work at the Pink Iguana, a trendy place with live shows. This evening, when I finished my act, my dad was waiting for me. He works for a secret government agency. He told me he needed to tell me something. He said it was an emergency. Come a little closer. Gina, kiddo, I'm in danger. I've gotten into a really big mess, and I'm afraid you're not safe either. What's the matter, Daddy? Oh, you're frightening me. There's no time to explain. They're right behind me. I need you to keep this crucifix, and no matter what happens, don't let them find out you have it. You can't trust anybody, not even the police. But Daddy, please, tell me what's going on. They're here. Quick, grab the crucifix, and don't let them see you with me. It was awful. Some guys pulled my dad away and took him into the storeroom. I scrambled away just in time and got the crucifix without them seeing me. I followed them to the storeroom. They tied my dad to a chair and violently started interrogating him. These two henchmen wouldn't stop hitting him, and my heart froze when I saw who was giving the orders. The Sandretti brothers. The famous mafia bosses? How'd your dad get mixed up with those guys? I don't know, but they... Get him to tell you what he knows. Beat the truth out of him, if you must. Speak. Where is it? I won't say a word. Damn you! You're gonna speak now. Speak or die. You choose. Go to hell! It seems our friend doesn't want to cooperate. What a shame. So, we got a tough boy on our hands. You're not easily convinced, huh? Boys, maybe you're being too soft on our little hero. Did you hear that? The boss says we're being softies. hi -ya! What are you doing? Didn't you hear his neck crack? You killed him, man. Up there. You already know the rest of the story. I ran out through an alleyway, and when I crossed the street... Please, don't leave me. They'll kill me. Don't worry. Just rest for now. Go to sleep. I won't leave you. She fell asleep. Those tranquilizers must have taken effect. What a story. I don't know what to think. The poor thing is probably in shock from the accident. I bet she dreamt all this, but what if it's true? What if her life really is in danger? I can't just leave her here and forget all about it. I'd never forgive myself if something happened to her. Okay, that's it. I'm not leaving this hospital until I'm sure Gina's completely out of danger. But how are you supposed to act in a situation like this? Yeah, I, I think I'd better do something to protect Gina in case those mafia murderers she says want to kill her show up. Hmm, let's see. It's a map of this floor of the hospital. Here's the room I'm in. Here's the hall, and if I'm not mistaken, across the hall and just to the left of this room, there's a storeroom. That could be interesting. Cracked. Gina must have broken it when she took that sleeping pill. 
snooze, it's one of the finest brands on the market. It contains a description of her injury. I'll keep it until... Let's see. Hmm, a matchbox I might be able to use. Let's see. That crucifix Gina's father gave her is... This might come... Okay, hope I live to... Yikes! I better not look down. I almost didn't make it. So, the map was right. This is the storeroom. Let's see what I can find in this dump. It's full of files, papers, and other hospital records. I think it weighs too much. There are several files inside labeled income from 19... At the medical school behind my department at the university, they had a bunch of these. But I think I'll just take it. His head's... The drawers are locked shut. I'll take them both. Well, they contain all sorts of medical equipment. I don't need any of them. Looky here, a Vademicum. This could be useful. It includes a description of almost every medicine. No it's a medical information card that's put into the charts by the beds. It's blank. Spray cleaner. This might come in handy. A box of syringes. I'll grab one. It's empty. I can't, it's, it's one of those weight. Someone threw away a, it might still work. Great, this marker's as dry as a bone, it won't work. This might come in. This marker's too narrow. I need a way to funnel alcohol into it. That's not how you fill a syringe. I'd rather carry the alcohol. Now the syringe is. Ha! <laughs> Betcha the. Good. You can't tell the difference between this and a real chart. 
I can't. It's it's locked shut. Let's see. Yes, this wig is just what I was looking for. Perfect. That way no one can see the hole in his head. Okay, if I use the pillows to look like the body, the head with the wig and a sheet to cover it all up a bit, I can make it look like a woman is sleeping here. That should do the trick. I don't think that's a good plan. Good, that way no... Perfect, that way they'll think it's Gina who's in the bed. Asleep, but those tranquilizers must have been made for elephants. Well, the important thing is, the trick worked and they shot the dummy in the other bed. So everything Gina told me was true. You actually do want to knock her off. It wasn't just her imagination. Okay, let's calm down, Brian. Right now, they think she's dead, which will buy us a bit of time. But we can't waste a minute. I gotta wake Gina up and get her out of this place before they find out she's alive and well. News at all. One of the finest brands. I'll try to figure out what it says about. It says the effects are powerful and almost immediate. The patient sleeps for hours and can only be awakened by a nice cold shower. Hmm. I don't think I'm strong enough to lug Gina into the shower, so I'll have to come up with another way of pouring cold water on her. Sprays watering. Good idea. I could use it as a flamethrower and make the sprinkler go off. The water would finally wake Gina up. Let's get to work. But careful, Brian. Don't broil your hand off. Ouch! Please. Ow! Ah. Now you wake up. Hurry, we've got to exit. Stage left at once. What's going on? This water, <laughs> the smoke, fire! I'll tell you later. Let me grab your stuff. You can change in the car. Come on, let's get to the parking lot. Dummy instead of shooting me? Hey, I like your style. First, you try to run me down with your car, and then you save my life. Do you do this kind of thing very often? 
No, I was just... It's a good thing that you grabbed my purse, because otherwise we wouldn't have the crucifix my father gave me. Now, what we have to do is... Headed for the nearest police station. This is a very serious matter, and it has to be placed in the hands of the police. No way. Let's keep the cops out of this, okay? If the government gets caught up in this, we don't know if we can trust them. Gina, the people that killed your father are after you now. If we go to the police, they'll make sure that... Read my lips. No, this is too big for the police, and we can't trust them. We have to find out what this crucifix means. Look, this all seems crazy to me. It's your problem if you decide not to turn to the police, but I'm washing my hands of the whole affair. I'm on my way to California. They're expecting me at Berkeley, and... I can't believe this guy. You practically turned me into roadkill, and now you want to feed me to the wolves? And here I was actually starting to believe you. But... Forget it. It's not worth it. Oh, why would you care if my father was killed? What does it matter to you if I'm murdered or if my whole family's destroyed? Okay, already. L let me tell you what we're gonna do. I have a friend who's an anthropologist. He works at the Museum of Archaeology and Natural History in Chicago. Well, since it's practically on my itinerary anyway, I'll drive you there and we can try to figure out more about that crucifix, okay? I knew I could count on you. You're a doll. Start this baby up. We can't waste any time. Hey, do you know where my blonde wig is? I was carrying it in my purse and now I can't seem to find it. Have you confirmed that? Yes, Don Roberto. Gustav is at the hospital right now. He's checked up on it. I can't see how that girl escaped. Looks like the guy who ran over her is along for the ride. They left the hospital together. Useless idiots. Have you identified this man's car? Yes, Don Roberto. We know the model, color, and license plate number. At least you've done something, Theodore. Meet with Gustav and be prepared. As soon as we locate the vehicle, you're gonna go after them. Whatever you say, Don Alberto. I assure you, we won't let them ditch us again. I hope not. Don't worry, Roberto. Those two couldn't have gotten very far. Carlo, you know I'm thinking something here. I'm almost glad that girl's still alive. What do you mean? That girl witnessed what happened, and if she talks, we're in big trouble. I know that. But it's obvious she hasn't gone to the police. I wonder why. Mm, I don't know. Maybe she's there right now. I'll bet you one dollar she won't stew on us. You know why? Because she knows something. I think our men spoke with her before that animal Gustav broke his neck. Besides, why else would she have been in the storeroom? Yeah, you may be right, brother. In which case, we gotta make her spill the beans. See what she knows. You're right, Carlo. We'll do that. Now we gotta get out the warning to all our boys out there. Make sure everyone's on the lookout for that car. I guess there's no other excuse for getting involved. <laughs> Gina had me dazzled. I can't deny it. But... What would you have done? A beautiful girl asks you for help, so what do you do? Kick her out of your car on some corner? I don't think so. It took us a whole day to get to Chicago because the old hunk of junk I drive is no race car. Along the way, we stopped to have some snacks and keep the car from overheating. We took turns driving so both of us could get in some shut-eye. We got to the museum pretty late, but my friend Clive knew we were on the way, so he waited up for us. Well, we made it to the museum. Let's park in the back. Okay. Hey, it's Munchkin Blob here. I'm calling from Chicago, and guess what? I just saw that car you're looking for. I swear I haven't had a drink, and I'm sure it's the same car. Yeah, a dopey-looking guy with some gal. They went into the Museum of Archaeology and Natural History. Sure thing, I'll tell them.
So, you're trying to find out the precise origin of this crucifix. It must be quite important for you to have come all the way here at this time of night. It really is, Clive, but there's no time to explain. What can you tell us about the crucifix? I can assure you it's a matter of life and death. Well, all right. Let's see. Quite a while ago, the museum trustees acquired the latest three-dimensional scanner for the museum's analysis laboratory. It's capable of analyzing the composition of any object, dating it, and performing a morphological study in order to catalog it. It has the most thorough art and archaeology database that exists in the whole world. We could most certainly use the scanner to delve into the origin of the crucifix. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go straight to the lab now. Just one moment. Uh, not so fast. Our first predicament is the poor condition the crucifix is in. It's obviously coated with a layer of filth that will make it impossible for the scanner to perform an accurate analysis. We must restore the crucifix first, if the scanner is to work properly. Well, let's restore it then. You can do it, can't you, Clive? I'm afraid not. I'm an anthropologist, not a restoration specialist. That sort of job must be performed by Dr. Oliva, the museum's finest art restorer. She just happens to work down the corridor at the restoration laboratory. She's there at this very moment. Yes, let's go talk to her now. Uh, hold on, there's another problem. In three days, the museum will be opening an exhibition on Mayan art. We're already behind schedule, and Dr. Oliva is overwhelmed with work, trying to restore all the pieces for the exhibition. I'm truly sorry, but you'll have to wait for the doctor to finish her work before having the crucifix restored. And I doubt that will happen for at least three days. Three days? No way. I can't wait three days. Professor Silva is waiting for me in California. This is unbelievable, Brian. You're already thinking of leaving me here defenseless? No, I wouldn't do that. But I can't wait for three days either. I'm going to talk with this doctor and try to get her to restore the crucifix tonight. Oh, dear. You can try to, Brian, but I'm warning you. Susan Oliva is not an easy woman to sway. If I were you, I certainly wouldn't dare make such a proposition until she's completed all her work for the exhibition. Well, I have to try. You said she was next door, right? Yes, through the first door on the left when you leave my office. Good luck, my friend. You'll be needing it. Listen here, Gina. What do you say if we take a little stroll around the museum and I show you some of its hidden mysteries? A stroll? I see you haven't changed a bit, Clive. Anyway, we'll meet up here in a little while. Uh, I don't know. Well, all right. Let's take a stroll. Hello? Dr. Oliva? Yes, who are you? Pleased to meet you, Doctor. My name's Brian Basco. I brought you an object to be restored. It's a crucifix, which... Listen, boy, this wretched son of Utsitsa has taken me two weeks of work to finish. And all of the numbered objects on these shelves here have to be restored by the time the Mayan art exhibition opens in 36 hours. But this is an emergency, Doctor. There are lives at stake. My life will be at stake if the items on those shelves aren't ready for the exhibition, all right? Doctor, it is of the utmost importance that you restore this crucifix right now. Look here, boy. Didn't I make myself clear? I have to restore all of the numbered items on the shelf. Every last one. In 36 hours! If I don't have a hernia first, that is. What is the son of Uxitsa? It's the most important piece on display at the Mayan exhibition. A stone mask with a large ruby set in the forehead. It was recently found at a temple in Piedras Negras in Honduras. I've been working to restore it and leave it in perfect condition for two weeks. I have no doubt that it will be the centerpiece of the exhibition. You must take pride in your work. Despite a lack of certain indispensable means, my work has been praised by the most prestigious of journals. So yes, I suppose there is a reason to feel pride. Are you a specialist in the art of the Maya? I'm a specialist in art. A professional, if you know what that word means. Where's the mask you mentioned? It's such a priceless piece that it won't be placed in the exhibit until the very last moment. It's held in a special vault that's kept at the ideal temperature and humidity needed to preserve the mask. Just what? My job is to restore works of art. And let me tell you something. No one in the world does it better than I do. What are you doing right now? Right now, I'm using a small lathe to clean up any flaws on the object. Then a laser smooths it out. How are the pieces kept?
The museum uses the latest scanner, which examines the piece using radiation. After determining the age and makeup of the item, the database is searched and a report is issued. Of course, an expert opinion is required at that point. I thought a museum like this would have more resources. Thinking is so simple. Don't you think I might work more efficiently if you leave me alone? I'll just... Fine. Some of the objects have a numbered sticker under them. The number must show what order they're supposed to be restored in. Cool. I'll trade it for the object that's next on the list to be restored. Done. The doctor didn't even notice. It looks like some sort of talcum powder container. This could be useful. Hmm, could be a briefcase full of varnish. I'll take this one here. It's colorless, but... It doesn't look very powerful. I think it could be made stronger by putting in a larger ruby. You can... Hello? Hey, you're a friend of Clive's, aren't you? I saw you come in with him and that hot babe. Yes, my name is Brian. Brian Basco. Brian? Dude, what a name! Are you a geek or what? I'm Willie. I'm in charge of administration here at this dump. Administration? You mean maintenance and all that, right? No, dude. I mean I'm gonna smack you silly if you don't quit yapping. I'm not a maid, I'll have you know. This whole museum would go to pot if it wasn't for me. And besides, you should know that I run my own small business. Okay, guy, calm down. What kind of small business are you running? Let's just say I represent a laboratory equipment factory. Here, take one of my cards in case you need any of our fine products. William P. Dustin, laboratory equipment. There's a phone number on it. Thanks, I'll keep it in mind. This Mayan art exhibition is a pretty big deal, isn't it? Hello? Hey, Mr. Potter! Yeah, you know, it's always a pleasure to do business with you. What do you need this time? A 100x eyepiece for an optical microscope? Hmm, I'll have to see if they're in stock, but I probably can. Let me check with the warehouse, okay? Call me back in 10 minutes. Sure, sure. We'll discuss price later. Same to you, Mr. Potter. See ya. Hey, dude, let's drop the small talk. I got other affairs going on. Well, you know how it is. Business is business. Okay, okay, goodbye. He's going up the stairs. Let's see where to. Look at him jive along. No way! 
Willie knows the combination to get into the analysis laboratory. I don't know how he got the combination because I highly doubt he's authorized to go in there. Now I think I know where the laboratory equipment factory that Willie supposedly represents is really located. I don't know much about art, but this all looks amazing. It's a human figure dressed as a king with some kind of bowls at his feet. I guess those objects represent the offerings the Maya made to their kings and gods. I don't think I'll be needing any of that. They look like bowls and pitchers. Hmm. Looks like they hold seeds and stuff like that. Hmm. I guess it's some... I believe it's nothing more than a... Hi, Willie. Hey, man. Uh, yeah. What was the what factory? Oh, uh, yeah, that's it. Labomatic. Cool name, huh? Well, how do you find time to do your work here at the museum and hold this position as a representative? I'm glad you asked me that. Look, there's one word that sums up my whole mess of a life. Professionalism. Get it, guy? That's just the way it has to be. I'm telling you, I'm a professional, and I know how to deal with all the little tasks life has given me without neglecting any of them. I'm a professional, man. A professional! Look, I'm not sure yet, but I might be needing a specific lab tool. Did you get it for me? Sure thing. I'll get you the goods cheap, but always high quality stuff, of course. When you know what you want, just let me know. I'll ask the guys down at the factory to see if we got the goods. If so, you'll have it here in a flash. But we only take cash. What can you tell me about Dr. Oliva? That crazy doc? She's a hysterical pain in the butt. She's one bitter obsession piece about her work. You can tell I don't like her, huh? She's always breathing down my neck over something or other. And besides that, she's damn ugly. Your little friend Clive, now there's one cool guy. And I'm not just saying it because you're going to repeat it to him. I don't kiss up to nobody. Listen, I wanted to ask you something about the analysis laboratory. Shoot. I notice you have to type in a combination to open the door. You uh, wouldn't happen to know it, would you? Sorry, dude. I'm not allowed into that lab. I saw that only authorized personnel are allowed in. Yeah. I guess the stuff they've got up there is worth a lot of loot, so they keep a lid on it. Plus, there's a stone mask up there right now for this dumb exhibition. Must be pricey. It's called the Sunny You Cheesy or something like that. It has a big ruby stuck on its forehead. If I could get my hands on that, so weak!
I don't want to take up any more of your time, Willie. See you later. See ya. Good idea. Go for it. Now I can't touch any of the keys. If I leave a fingerprint behind, it would ruin the entire plan. The next thing I have to do is get Willie to enter the combination that opens the door so his fingerprints are left behind on the right keys. I don't get it. It's a public... Hmm, good idea. I'll call Willie and try to get him to enter the analysis laboratory. That way, I can try to find out the access code. I hope the number on that business card he gave me is his real phone number. Hello? Mr. Dustin? Yeah, that's me. What can I do for you? Well, my name is Frank Steiger. I, I'm a friend of Mr. Potter's. He told me you could furnish me with some products that I need. Sure. It's a pleasure to do business with a friend of Mr. Potter's. He's one of my best customers, you know. By the way, your voice sounds familiar. Do we know each other, Mr. Steiger? No, I don't think so. Well, anyway, what can I do you for? Well, I was interested in some eyepieces. Yeah, eyepieces for optical microscopes. Whoa, this must be repeat request night. Seems like everyone's looking for the same thing. Come again? Nothing, Mr. Stagger. Just running off at the mouth. Tell me, what kind of eyepieces do you need? I can tell you I got a nice set of 100Xs. Well, I was looking for some 200X eyepieces, actually. 200, huh? Well, I'll have to check the warehouse. Call me back in 10 minutes, and I'll tell you if we have any in stock. Talk to you soon, then. Talk to you soon, Mr. Steiger. It's coming up now. I'll hide behind here. I should wait for Willie to leave the lab before going in there myself. It'd be embarrassing for the two of us to run into each other. I can see that Gina and Clive have gone on that casual little stroll around the museum. There's no doubt about it. Clive's the same old guy as ever. He'd ignore his own mother to chase after a woman. Let's see. This is a two-volume treatise on anthropology. I was never very interested in this subject, but I may need the books to find my way around the museum. Hey. Look what was hidden under the books on the table. It's an X-shaped crack. Kind of looks like a keyhole to open a lock. It's chock full of books and exotic items. No doubt about it, the laboratory for doing analyses has got to be behind this door. 
perfect. Now I can tell which keys have Willie's fingerprints on them and guess the combination. I'll only dust the keys that have varnish on them. Cool. Now I can tell Willie's fingerprints apart from mine, no problem. And it looks like the varnish dried completely with the powder on it. So now I can press the keys without having to worry about erasing the fingerprints. The numbers that make up the code are 1, 3, 7, and 8. All I have to do is figure out the right combination. If I remember right, when I saw Willie enter the combination, the sounds the keys made went something like... Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, that's it. 8137. I won't forget that combination. Hmm. It's pretty dark in here, but I better not turn on the lights. I don't want anyone to find me here. It looks like a thermal chamber used to keep pieces of art under ideal conditions of temperature and humidity. The son of Uxitsa. Star display at the Mayan art exhibition has got to be in there. Hmm, it's an old key or something. Maybe I'll... Well, how about that? There was a note under it. Let's see. Clive, here is the ancient Aztec key all clean and polished like you requested. Next time, don't wait so long before having it cleaned. It was disgustingly filthy. See you next Monday. Signed by a guy named Ron. So the key belongs to Clive. Well, I'll just give it to him later. I wonder what Clive you I'll ask when I give it. Yes, I bet the Aha, uh -huh, a hidden safe. It's a voice recorder. Well, okay. I'll just borrow it from Clive for a while. Then I'll give it back to him. No, I I can't go out of the office and just leave the hidden safe open. I don't see any reason for doing that. Let's... I know it can't... I think you have to push that button. Please state your name for the voice identification system. Susan... Name invalid access... I don't think I'll get... Excuse me, doctor. Could you tell me your name again? Dr. Susan Oliva. It's marked clearly on the door. All right. Let's see if the plan works. Please state your name for the voice identification system. Dr. Susan Name invalid. Access denied. What in the world? Oh, the battery went dead right when I needed it. I'll take the battery out of the tape recorder. Gotta find a battery with some power. It's filled with liquid nitrogen. I'm quite familiar with these from my university days. 
It can be dangerous. Let's see if it fits. Perfect. Well, this is a good opportunity to check whether you can restore some of a dead battery's energy by lowering its temperature. Let's remove the battery from the ladle. The battery is definitely frozen. I hope it'll make the tape recorder run now. Voila! I hope the recorder... I hope the battery lasts long enough. Please state your name for the voice identification system. Dr. Susan Oliva. Identification verified. Good evening, Dr. Oliva. Please remember that the chamber will automatically close in 30 seconds. It worked! I shouldn't do... I hope nothing... Good idea. Maybe I can use it to get the ruby out. Cool! It worked! Let's see if I can put this one in place of the one that's already there. Fantastic! I think this will make the laser beam much more powerful. Now I'll wait for the doctor to come and use the laser. It worked! My heart goes out to the good doctor, but there was nothing else I could do. I need an ice mocha, now! No. No, that... There's something in... It's an empty package of... There's an empty package of coffee inside. I don't know what I'd need. There are different types of coffee. Cappuccino, espresso, caffeine. I think the little... Impossible! It's... Hey, that bowl there has something that looks a lot like coffee in it. I'm grabbing it. Maybe I can use this to make Dr. Oliva some coffee. Willie, here's some coffee so you can refill the machine upstairs. Mm, I don't know, dude. That doesn't look like coffee to me. Anyway, those are coffee beans, and that stupid machine ain't gonna work with nothing but coffee that's all ground up, man. I need an ice mocha now. For? What in the world is that? Con I don't think. I don't like. I 
might be able to use the lathe to grind. It worked like now this coffee-like stuff has been ground. I don't know what I'd need that. Willie, here's some coffee so you can refill the machine upstairs. Mm. Dude, are you sure this crud is coffee? Yeah, of course it's good coffee. I buy it in bulk. No, man, I'll pass. It's not that I don't trust you, dude, but I don't want any trouble. I'd rather use the job I normally pick up for the machine in case I get busted. All right, it may be just what I need. It's empty, but I can still smell coffee. Okay, start pouring. Phew, that was just the right amount. Now it looks like a brand new package of coffee. Willie, here's some coffee so you can refill the machine upstairs. Dude, this is the brand I always use. Yeah, baby, this is right on time. See, now I don't have to go out tomorrow and buy some. I'm gonna go fill up that junky coffee machine right away. This Willie guy is an unusual character. Well, let's see if I can finally take this rich aromatic coffee to the doctor. I'll just wait one little moment so Willie has time to refill the machine. Okay, let's go. It's working now. The red light is off. Okay, I'll just get one. I hope it's nice and strong. Here, doctor, have some coffee. It'll make you feel better. Now, that's better, isn't it? Come on, you can start working again now that you've calmed down. We wouldn't want the Mayan exhibition to be canceled because you didn't finish your work, would we now? Of course not. I'll get to work immediately, and no one's gonna stop me this time, not even the feds. Munchkin Bob. I see you haven't grown much in the past few years. If it ain't Gustav, my one-eyed pal. It looks like the eye they ripped out of you hasn't grown back either. Careful, Bob. Don't tempt me. Let's just get down to business. They're still in that dumb museum, right? That's right. The car hasn't moved from the lot. We can wait here until they come out and grab them. Without the car, they could have escaped in some other direction. Nah, I won't run the risk of having them get away again. Let's go after them. You wait here, Bob, and watch to see if the cops show up. Okay, Gustav, whatever you say. Well, I had to leave the doctor alone so she could pay full attention to restoring the crucifix. But it's been a while now, and being as enthused as she was after drinking that coffee, I'm sure the crucifix is all finished. So, I'm going in. Man, it looks like the doctor is completely out of it. But I see she managed to finish restoring the crucifix. Excellent. It certainly needed polishing. Oh, looks like no. Hmm, this is interesting. Now I'm sure we can find out where it came from and what it's for. I better go to the lab right away and use the scanner to check out the crucifix.
What a weird night. Are you guys friends of Clyde's too? First came that hot babe with Brian the Dweeb Man, who I have nothing against, of course. He may be a nerd, but he's a nice guy. And now you guys, man. By the way, what are those get-ups you're wearing, man? And you know what? It's about time I found out what that is. Let's see if I can figure out how to work the fancy scanner. Crucifixes of Hopi origin. The Hopi are a Native American tribe that lives in Arizona. Great. That is an important piece of information, but I'm starting to understand this whole story less and less. The materials that the crucifix is made of aren't valuable at all. And even though it's probably of some historical value, it'd never be worth killing people over. There must be something else behind the story of this crucifix. Brian, quick, follow me. It's Gina. She's in danger. I'm sorry, Brian. No! You told me you wouldn't hurt me if I handed it over to you. No! As you can imagine, this is when things got really out of control. Luckily, those guys were interested in knowing what we'd found out. Otherwise, I doubt they'd have let us live. Of course, that blow to the head knocked me out, and I didn't know what was going on for quite a while. When I came to... I realized that we were flying in a helicopter. My head ached and pounded, and when Gina told me what happened to Clive, well, I felt absolutely awful to know they'd done away with him. I couldn't stop thinking that if I hadn't gone to the museum that night, he'd still be alive. I did my best to get over it, and decided that feeling sorry for him would get us nowhere. The sad truth was that I'd have the same fate as Clive if I didn't come up with a plan. The instinct for survival and a desire for revenge took over my thoughts, and I totally forgot about Clive. A bit later, the helicopter began to descend. I could see we were landing in a desert area in the middle of what looked like an old oil field. We were taken out of the helicopter and put inside of an old cabin. It was pretty obvious they were mainly interested in Gina. As soon as we got in the cabin, they tied her to a chair and started to beat the living daylights out of me. They put me to sleep once again with a well-aimed pistol whip at the back of my neck. When I woke up, I was all turned around and I thought my head was going to explode. Ouch! Oh, my aching head. Those wretched thugs smack me up good. I swear these insane murderers are gonna pay for this. On top of it all, they stole everything I had on me. My wallet, my car keys, my piece of amber, everything. I'll try to get my stuff back. But the first thing I've gotta do is find out what they've done with Gina and try to get out of this huge mess in one piece. There's a fairly large crack in the middle of the door. You're quite a pretty girl. You don't want to stop being pretty, do you? Well, then you better start talking if you don't want to look like a Picasso painting. You're wasting your time, boys. I'm clueless, I swear. A broken arm won't keep you from talking, and it might refresh your memory. Leave me alone. You're just a bunch of filthy murderers. I have to help Gina. Those animals are capable of doing anything. What? This is my shirt. Those jerks tore it to shreds. They couldn't even... They're mine, but those jerks broke them. I'm lucky I only have a slight case of myopia in each eye. I really use glasses as a precaution more than a necessity. This might come in here.
an all-purpose cleanser. I'll take it with me, but there's no way I'm cleaning this pigsty up. Yeah, this should come in handy. It's a chamois. This could be useful. It's one of the pegs from the coat rack on the wall. I may be needing this. It weighs a ton. There's no way I can get it to move if it's full. There isn't even a can of soda, but it's full of huge blocks of ice. Done that, now it'll start to defrost. The glass is so filthy the light can barely get through. Yes, it might be a good idea to clean the window pane off so that the sun comes in, but I need something to wipe it off with. Yeah, it might be a good idea to wipe off the glass so that the sun can come in, but the chamois alone won't do much. I need some kind of glass cleaner to put on the rag. Done. Now the chamois can be used for cleaning. Okay, that way I can get the sun to come in through the window. Let's wipe it clean. Wow, hard to believe the layer of dirt on there. Let the sun shine in. All right, now that the power to the freezer's been cut off, the lid is open and the sun is shining in on the blocks of ice. I think it'll defrost in a jiffy. It's been a while, let me see. The ice is completely melted, but now the freezer's full of water. Yeah, that's how I'll empty the water out of the freezer. Okay, it looks like it's all empty now. Okay, here we go. I think I can move it now that it's empty. Cool, a 
trap door. I knew it! Something was telling me the solution was hiding under that heavy freezer. Yes, I'll try to pry the padlock off. Done! Now I can get the heck out of this wretched cabin. All right, I think I can slip out under the cabin. I'll be careful not to go out through the front so they don't catch me. Here we go! I made it out. I'll hide behind those rocks and think about what to do next. Hello. What rock did you climb out from under, handsome? Uh, hi. I... He's here to rescue us, girl. We're saved! To rescue you? But I thought I was the one. Did that lizard Jules send you? Jules? Wait, hold on. I don't know what you're talking about. I just escaped from that cabin there. Some mafia thugs were holding me prisoner. Me and my, uh, uh whoa, a friend of mine. You've got to help me set her free. Her life is in danger. I was just in that cabin a while ago. We saw a chopper fly in, and I went there to ask for help. But some guy with an eye patch told me to do an about face and never come back there if I didn't want to become buzzard food. Listen, cutie, we're in a jam here, too. We are artists on a nationwide tour. And our bus broke down a week ago. We've been stuck in this godforsaken desert all this time. I drive a jewel who accompanied us on tour, went for hell. And well, we haven't heard from Jules again. I bet that jerk took off with all the money we gave him and left us out here to become cactus fertilizer. Jules said he knew of a shortcut through this hot desert and that we'd get to Las Vegas much faster his way. I bet the swindler had it all planned out. I bet he broke the bus himself to steal our money and leave us here with the rattlesnakes. Well, I see you're not doing much better than me, but I'm sure we can work together to find a way out of here. The most important thing to me is freeing Gina. Those guys are dangerous and might do away with her at any moment. And you girls have to help me. Don't get me wrong, but I trust guys like you less and less every day. Who is this Gina woman? Why are they holding her captive in that cabin? Who are those guys you say you're running from? And most importantly, who are you? It's a long story, and we're running out of time. Believe me, I'm one of the good guys, and I can assure you they're the bad guys. Will you help me? By the way, my name's Brian. Hi, I'm Carla. And I'm Mariola. Charmed. And I'm Lula, and mm, hey, we're with you on this, you big hunk. We'll help you out. You have a plan, dear? A plan? Of course. A plan to free your girlfriend and get us innocent lambs out of here. She's not my girlfriend. And, well, I haven't thought of a plan yet. She's not your girlfriend. A handsome man like you with no girlfriend? Mm. You don't like women much. That's it, isn't it? Okay, okay. She is my girlfriend. And I think I do have a plan. Just let me think a while and let the plan develop. Develop, develop. In the meantime, I'm going to rehearse my new dance move. Yeah, and I'm going to get back to my tail. And I'm going to rest for a while. I'm simply exhausted. Got it. Hey, don't you want to hear my plan? Why don't you just wait until you got everything ready? Okay, Luscious? Okay, okay. Don't wear yourselves out, girls. Okay, first of all, let's go over the plan again. We've got to get the thugs' attention so they leave the house. Then I can go in and untie Gina, and we'll escape through the trap door. When those thugs go back inside the house and realize Gina and I are gone, we'll implement part two of the plan, somehow locking the bad guys inside the cabin so they can't come after us. Last of all, part three is finding a getaway vehicle. 
seem to be in the middle of a desert, so going on foot is out. I can't waste a single moment. Gina's life is in jeopardy. Let's get down to work. Basketball. It's deflated and needs some stitching, but it might be of use. Wow! What a sweet setup they've got here. Very chic. I like it. I see Carla's lying down in back. I think it's the axle of the device that opens and closes the bus door, but it's strange. The crank that the driver uses to turn the axle is missing. It's full of necklaces. It's full of lipstick. Well, I'll just grab whichever. I don't plan on using any myself, but I might use it for something else. A bunch of ring... They're nice. It's okay. I'm sure the girls have plenty. Maybe I'll show how thoughtful I am by giving them to Gina as a present. It looks like a handle to something. Like a flashlight, maybe. It wasn't a flashlight after all. It's a handheld vacuum. I know I can use this. Uh, no thanks, they're not my size. It looks like shoe repair thread, and there's a needle next to it. I'll take the needle too. Maybe I can use it somewhere. Okay, I'll try to stitch it. Well, that turned out better than I expected. Let's see if I can blow it up with this doohickey. It worked! You can't even tell where I stitched it up. Uh, excuse me, Carla? Yes, honey. You look exhausted. Utterly, darling. Listen, I was a bit indisposed when I woke up yesterday because of some stomach trouble. So I took a pill I keep just for these occasions. The trouble is, I forgot you can't mix the pills with alcohol because they knock you out. So, I had a Turkish passion in the evening. I invented that nectar-like delight, by the way. <laughs> Ooh, sister, you can't imagine what happened. It's like I was frozen in space. My graceful body seemed to weigh a ton. <gasps> Just horrid. I'm feeling a tad better today, but I'm still a bit peaked. I need to get some beauty sleep. I just happen to have a bit of heartburn. You wouldn't let me try one of those pills you take, would you? Darn, I just ran out. When I went to take one yesterday, there were only two left in the bottle. I took one and dropped the other one, which fell through that grating on the floor. And you say that if you mix those pills with alcohol, it knocks you out cold? Let me tell you, honey, that mix is a time bomb, and the effects last for hours. Are you gastrically challenged? Well, look, they're just momentary bouts of pain. You know, once in a while, you overburden your system and things go out of whack. Speaking of which, tell me what you want for... Have you been together for long, Lula, Mariola, and you? Mariola and I have been together for over 15 years. Back then, our stage name was Hernandez and Fernandez. Times were crazy, and our show was just divine. About five years back, we met Lula and created the Divas. 
Since then, we've acted as a threesome on the best stages this country has to offer. We've been a huge success. I'll let you get to the list. Good idea. Maybe I can find the pill that Carla dropped. I'll open up the vacuum cleaner bag and see if Lady Luck is on my side. Bingo! Here's the pill. It's hexagonal. Tanning oil. Mariola, do you mind if I borrow your tanning oil? Sorry, sugar, that's my last blood. I still haven't acquired that bronze tone that turns macho men into love machines. Playing graveyard. And as far as I can tell, most of them are military aircraft from around the time of World War II, I'd say. It's a little rusty, but I bet it might still work if I grease it up. It's in good shape, and I could actually use it if I find some bullets to fill it up. It's a bit old, but it might save me from any other punches. Wow, an oil well. It seems pretty old. I bet it's been running for years. Hmm. Yeah. I like the idea of tinting the lenses so it looks darker through them. Let's try. Done. Good idea. That way Mariola will think she has a darker tan. Careful, she better not notice. Mariola, do you mind if I borrow your tanning oil? Oh, all right, take it. I think I already have a luscious tail. Tell me, honey, don't you find me irresistible? Oh, yeah, you're uh, one hot babe with that tan. Thanks for the suntan oil. I don't plan on lying out in the sun, but I might need it for something else. It's not the best kind of oil to grease it up with, but it should work.
make it a work now. Let's see how that works. Perfect. The cabin is within shooting range. he's not one of the good guys. He looks like a buff type of guy that might shoot you in the back. He must be guarding that barn or something. I can't let him see me. There's no way I can open the doors without that weightlifter hearing me. When I got here, I thought I saw a window without bars on the other side of the barn. I'll try and get in that way. Excellent choice. If what Carla told me about the effects of the pill being mixed with alcohol is right, this guy will go out like a light, fast. But it's impossible to do it without him noticing. I have to distract him somehow in order to stick the pill into the can behind his back. Can, drinking can, dunking can. Made it. No one could beat me at this point. Lula. I need your help. There's a hot athlete I want to distract. And if you're the stud magnet I think you are, you may be the woman for the job. Mmm, what? This about a hot stud, you adorable little troublemaker. Look, that guy thinks he's king of the court. And he needs a gal like you to teach him a lesson. If you could just... Sounds deliciously tempting, but I'm busy. But I don't stalk men like Mariola. Shoot. I guess flattery won't get me as far as I thought. Yeah, there's something to that idea. Maybe I can get Lula to admit who she really is and get her to distract the muscle man in the barn. Lula, come look! Hey, big boy. I didn't know you liked sports. Hmm? Where did you get that basketball? Throw it to Lula. This is the ball from the first match I won my first title at. I knew it. Give up the act, sister. You're Lou Lemaire, aren't you? And I see you can still work wonders with a basketball. Of course. I've still got the magic touch. Why do you think I was named most valuable player in the league three years in a row? Too bad that all went by the wayside when you messed up that last basket in the 95 finals, huh? It was a personal foul, for goodness sake. That vision impaired bad of a referee didn't see it. Those journalist leeches looked the other way. Everyone in the whole pavilion was blinded by my grandeur. But it was a personal foul. Okay, okay. Pipe down, Lou. I mean, Lula. That's all in the past now. Best not to stir up old memories. After all, who hasn't missed a basket at some point? When completely alone under the basket? while vying to win the NBA Finals? 
It really isn't that important. Dare you insinuate that there was no foul, hmm? No, of course not. Of course there was a foul. On purpose, too. What's important now is you've got to help me out by distracting that guy I told you about. Being who you are, you won't have any problem with a little competition hooping cans into a bucket, will you? I'm sure you'll beat him easy, and that way you can soften the uh, studly thing up a bit. All right, you win, but with two conditions. One, that all that hearsay about my past remains a uh, entree new. <laughs> I really want to protect Carla and Mariola from this. And two, um, well, look. Ever since I missed, I mean, ever since that personal foul that kept me from making that basket in the finals, I've been drained of my self-confidence. I'll probably prance up to the sky, and I won't know what to say or do. So, you have to come along and talk for me. But that's impossible. I can't let him catch sight of me or he'll recognize me. He has to have seen me when they brought me in in the helicopter. Yes, I understand. Well, I've got it. Mm -hmm. Listen, dear, we have some of those juicy little receivers you place inside your ear. They blend in entirely. We use them for some of our cabaret acts. Here's the plan. I stick it in, and you use the walkie-talkie to whisper my lines to me. Tell me you love the idea. I guess it's okay. Let's try it. Hey, who are you? What are you doing here? This is private property, so you better vacate the premises. Uh, well, you see, I, uh... Didn't you say he was an Adonis? Calm down, Lula. Tell him you were just passing through, that you saw what nice hoops he was shooting into the tank, and that he's not bad. Well, as I said, I was passing along and saw you toss some cans at that tank. And I said to myself, ooh, this guy's pretty hot. <laughs> at basketball, that is. Pretty hot? Very hot, you mean? I don't think you'll come across anyone that can shoot hoops like me. Tell him you're not so bad yourself. Challenge him to throw from further away. That way, he'll get out of the way, and I can come right on in. Well, to tell you the truth, hot stuff, I can shoot baskets just as well as you can. And from even further away. <laughs> yeah, right. You must be joking, aren't you? You don't really think you can beat me. Follow me, if you dare. And I'll show you. I shouldn't leave my post, but Rocco Wallace is always willing to take on a challenge. I'll laugh my head off teaching this ditz a lesson. <laughs> anyway, I see there are quite a few empty cans around here. Ooh, look at this. How about that? I have to admit, you ain't bad. Uh, but I can do better. Watch I have to take advantage of this dog. nice moment of privacy to do whatever You're I need to do. not bad, but uh, I'm the best. Watch okay, I can spike the beer now that the gorilla's left his cage. There we go. I hope he finishes that can before opening another. I think he's coming back. Better take off so Biceps Boy doesn't find me and ruin everything at the last moment. Cross your fingers. Man, that last sip of beer was a killer. I think I'm losing it. I better have another drink. Congratulations, it worked. He is so tired, he can barely move. Hey pal, what? Feeling drowsy, are we? What are you doing here, pipsqueak? I don't know how you got out of the cabin, but the, as soon as I wake up, I'm gonna grind you in the hamburger meat. Uh, just wait for this dizzy spell to pass and you're gonna get it. You're in no state to be threatening anyone, Mac. When you snap out of it, if you do, we'll be long gone. Okay, we can't waste a second. I'll go open the barn door. That chopper will get us all out of this dust bowl. Ooh. 
Let's go over the plan again. We've got to get the thugs' attention so they leave the house. Then I can go in and untie Gina, and we'll escape through the trap door. When those thugs go back inside the house and realize Gina and I are gone, we'll implement part two of the plan. Somehow locking the bad guys inside the cabin so they can't come after us. Last of all, part three is finding a getaway vehicle. We seem to be in the middle of a desert, so going on foot is out. And to get away, we can use the helicopter. Uh, don't really know who's gonna fly the thing. I don't get it. What's I can't happening really use to it me? It's all covered with paint. Yeah, peanut butter. All right, maybe it will be useful at some point. I better carry it with the lid on. Yeah, keep that jaw away from me. It's dangerous. Dangerous? This mere little glass jar? And here I thought you were a tough guy. It's not the jaw that's dangerous. It's the wild ants in this area. Ants? Yeah, they go berserk over peanut butter. Listen, you're worse off than I thought. Think whatever you like, moron. See that wood left over behind there? It was a nice old rocking chair. A few days ago, I left a jar of peanut butter open on it. And when I came back a few hours later, the rocking chair was just as you see it now, with a million ants all over it. Yeah, whatever you say. You better head straight for the cabin before Gustav and Theodore realize you ran away. It weakling. reminds me of one my dad used to have in the backyard. As a kid, I'd entertain myself by banging on it with a baseball bat. The truth is, I was a bit wild in those years. Yeah, it'd be nice for me to relive old times and unleash some of that pent-up rage I hold within. I don't get it. What's happening to me? It's very therapeutic, I assure you. It's one of the footrests from the motorcycle. It fell off when I hit it with the crowbar. I may be needing this. You better head straight for the cabin before Gustav and Theodore realize you ran away, weakling. Yeah, I think they'll fit together somehow. Perfect. Now the lever's as good as new. It works. The door closed. It's a pocket of leather stuck to the door. I guess it's meant to hold the bus keys or something like that. Let's see what's inside. This could be you. Let's see if I'm lucky, and this key is the one to the fridge. Well, let's see what we've got here. I'll grab the butter. Looks like Carla didn't even notice, but I locked the door again just in case. Wow, looks like the railroad tracks come all the way up to here. Although judging by the look of that train car, the tracks must be from the 1800s. Danger, explosives. I wonder what kind of ants inhabit this area. Let's see what's inside. Yuck! Ugh! 
doesn't smell very good in here. It's chock full of screws. I think it's one of the ones they used to build the train tracks. No, I'm not going to take the whole bucket full, but I will take one screw. It's long, so it might be good for something. This barrel here, let's see if I can get it open. I wonder what's inside. Peanuts. I wonder how long they've been in the barrel. Yeah, I can use the helmet as a pot to melt the butter. Okay, I'll put the peanuts in. Great, now all I have to do is heat it up so everything melts together nice and smooth. And ta-da! I'll have whipped up a lovely batch of peanut butter. They're all empty. X, X, X. No doubt about it, it's a barrel of gunpowder. Yeah. I think the top of the screw might fit right into the opening on the peg. Presto! They fit together so well that I'll never be able to pull them apart again. All right, I might use it for something. What? You just start... I don't believe... You won't get anywhere doing that. Sure, I can. I need something to pour the gunpowder. Just a bunch of. Aha! Uh -huh. I'll place the bucket at the bottom of the barrel so the gunpowder falls in when I screw the hole into the barrel. I've got it! Sweet! Now the bucket's full of gunpowder. Cool. I like that idea. Turning harmless lipstick into a high-caliber bullet. Yeah! Here we go. I'll dab a little gunpowder on the base. Ready. No need to put any more gunpowder on it. Well, let's see how well it fits. Perfect! Now let's see if I can make some more bullets to finish filling up the belt. I wonder what kind of... Yes, with all these. All right, ready. There was just, all right, I'll fill up the bullet belt. They just slide in. Huh, what a coincidence. There's exactly the same number of bullets as empty slots.
Well, A-okay. Now the machine gun is ready for firing whenever I might need it. Let's go over the plan again. We've got to get the thugs' attention so they leave the house. Then I can go in and untie Gina, and we'll escape through the trap door. When those thugs go back inside the house and realize Gina and I are gone, we'll implement part two of the plan. Somehow locking the bad guys inside the cabin so they can't come after us. Last of all, part three is finding a getaway vehicle. We seem to be in the middle of a desert, so going on foot is out. We'll use the machine gun to keep them pinned inside the house. The idea of... Good thinking. With the sun beating down on the freezer lid, it must be hot enough to fry an egg. Perfect for making that tasty peanut butter. Let's leave it on the burner a bit longer so that it melts into a smooth cream. I can use the spatula from the jar of real peanut butter to stir the mixture. Well, it's not real peanut butter, but I think it'll pass. And the color is certainly just like the real thing. Well, it seems like a harebrained scheme, but why not? Can't hurt to try. Let's see. Let's see if those ants show any sign of life. Jeez! Unbelievable! This isn't happening. Wild bees! Absolutely amazing! They've munched up the shack into a pile of sawdust. Luckily, the things inside have remained intact. There's enough dynamite to blow this whole place up. I better walk carefully with this stuff on me. Fine plan. If I choose the right moment to blow up the well, I can draw the goon's attention. Let's put the dynamite in place. The detonator goes behind this rock, which is perfect for protecting me from the blast. Let's go over the plan again. We've got to get the thugs' attention so they leave the house. Then I can go in and untie Gina, and we'll escape through the trap door. When those thugs go back inside the house and realize Gina and I are gone, we'll implement part two of the plan. Somehow locking the bad guys inside the cabin so they can't come after us. Last of all, part three is finding a getaway vehicle. We seem to be in the middle of a desert, so going on foot is out. We'll grab their attention by blowing up the oil well at just the right time. Everything is ready, then. I'll go talk with the girls and put the plan in motion. Girls, listen to me. I've got something important to tell you. I have some good news and some bad news. Which do you want to hear first? Oh, dear boy, start with the good news, please. I've cooked up the perfect plan to set Gina free and get us all out of here. I'll need a bit of cooperation on your behalf, but it'll be easy, so don't worry. So what about that bad news, darling? Well, uh, let's see. Do any of you know how to fly a helicopter? A helicopter? A helicopter? Mmm! Calm down, girls. It's no problem. Sergeant Hewitt reporting, sir! Reconnaissance pilot from the Bravo Division, sir! Windward Regiment, 2nd Battalion, Charlie, United States Marine, sir! You're a Marine? Oh, that's awesome, Carla. I would have never guessed. Very well, then. There's no time to waste. Go get your things and take them to the chopper. Then I'll explain the details of the plan and tell each of you what your mission is. Oh, and one more thing. Remember that we're flying out on a helicopter that doesn't hold all the stuff you've got in the bus. Please, just take what you need. Oh, good thing you brought just the essentials. And hey! You don't expect us to be taking the bodybuilder along, too, do you? 
He's really a nice boy, Brian. He just needs someone to set him on the right path. Us girls will take care of that. The poor guy just needs a chance in life. We'll give him just what he deserves. Okay, whatever you gals want. The important thing is this. Listen. First, we're going to cause an explosion in that oil well to distract the one-eyed guy and his sidekick. You're in charge of that, Mariola. Don't worry, it'll be simple. I've got it all planned out. You just have to activate the detonator and run to the helicopter, okay? And how will I know when to push the button? We'll use radio transmitters. You'll each be wearing one, and I'll give you instructions over the walkie-talkie. Lula, are there enough transmitters? Yes, sweetie pie. No problem. Mm, there are more than enough. Perfect, then. Lula, we'll be taking advantage of your excellent marksmanship, so use the machine gun I set up for you in the airplane graveyard. It's got a great clear shot to the cabin. If the plan goes off without a hitch, the oil well will blow up and those thugs will run out of the cabin to find out what happened, which is when I slip in and free Gina. All right, when the thugs go back inside, you'll start to shoot at the cabin to keep them from running after us, since they'll have realized that Gina's gone. Understood? Understood? It's gonna be so much fun to slaughter those pigs, but when do I make a run for the helicopter? Let's see, you'll still be too far from here, and you've gotta give us cover while we retreat. Mariola, Gina, and I will be on board the helicopter. We'll take off and go pick you up at the plane cemetery. Okay, but don't forget about me. Calm down, nobody's staying on land. Carla, you'll start up the engines as soon as Mariola gets back from the oil well, okay? Yoo-hoo, Carla! Huh? Oh yeah, sorry. I was just going over this flight manual. Flight manual? Carla, are you sure you know how to fly this bird? Why, of course. I was just reviewing certain concepts. I've got more in-flight hours than a bald eagle. And just about the same hairdo, you old hag. Your insides are just eaten up with jealousy. Come on, girls, don't claw each other's eyes out. Carla, we have 100% faith in you. In our prayers, too. Mm, this is so exciting, girls. I feel like I'm on Charlie's Angels. Okay, enough talk. Everyone get in position. Good luck to everyone, and to myself. Okay, let's make sure everything's set up. Hey, Ariola, are you in position? Oh, yes, of course. Ready. Okay, wait for my signal. Lula, are you ready? Ready when you are, and mad about going into combat. Perfect. Just stay alert, Carla. All set? In position, sir. Sergeant Hewitt, prepared for takeoff. Very good. You pay attention, too. A-okay. It's time. Let the party begin. Mariola, blow up that well. What in the world was that? Oh, man. They blew up the well. I don't like this one bit. We gotta call the Sandretti's. The girl's gone. Take cover! We're being ambushed! That's impossible, crazy broad. Fast, Lula! Climb on board! with that plane, Carla. Come on, Carla, get us out of here. Oh! Wait, what's the matter now? I broke a fingernail activating that damn detonator. What a getaway, huh? You can't deny it. It was amazing. The helicopter ride? Well, let's just say it was pretty intense. Carla hadn't piloted a plane for years, and I admit my palms were a bit sweaty. But the important thing is that she got us to the part of Arizona where the Hopi people live. We thought we'd find more information on the weird crucifix there. Fortunately, I got the crucifix back along with the rest of my stuff when I went into the cabin to save Gina. And luckily, the girls had all their wardrobe with them so they could lend Gina and me some clothes. We knew it'd be great to put on clothing better adapted to the part of the desert we were headed for.
careful, you guys. You gals, too. And thanks for everything. I can't stand goodbye. I always cry like a baby. I promise. We'll go see your show as soon as we have time. You better stick to that promise if you don't want to piss off a marine cutie. Goodbye. Goodbye. See you soon. Goodbye, girls. I'll never forget you. We won't forget you either. Bye. Well, we're on our own. You got a problem with that? Being alone with me doesn't make you uncomfortable, does it? Uh, of course not, silly. Hey, don't get mad. I was just kidding. Come on, let's not waste any time. Hurry up, let's find someone who knows about the Hopi Indians. Maybe we'll get lucky and run across an actual Hopi. I doubt it, but you never know. I saw a path behind here. Let's go. Wait, my bootlace came untied. I'll catch up with you. I'm gonna take a look from up there. Feeling sorry is not the answer. Hey! Who are you? I didn't hear you come up. I am Wupochim, last of the Hopi chiefs. The answer is to continue on your mission, not to feel sorry. How do you know all this? I don't understand how you... Hey, wait a minute. Did you say Hopi? I did, of course. That's incredible. We... I mean, I'm here to find out the meaning of a crucifix of Hopi origin. Show me the object. This is it. My young friend, this is not a crucifix. It is a sacred key. A key? But it's not shaped like a key. The way you are holding it in your hand, press strongly on the upper part with your thumb. Oh. Well, it sure looks like a key now. And what is it this sacred key opens? It is the key to the sacred Hopi crypt. The sacred crypt? Where is this crypt? Right across from our village, on the highest peak, on the other side of the Great Canyon, where Isturok places his first ray at dawn. Oh, and could you tell me how to get to the Hopi village? The sacred key went to you, so your destiny is to reach the sacred crypt. What path to follow? The path of knowledge, no doubt. Well, I think there's something I should tell you. You see, the truth is that this key... 
It's not my... Hey! He disappeared! Now how did he leave without me noticing? Just like when he came. Feeling sorry is not the answer, huh? That's easy to say, but I feel I can't move one step down to Gina's. Well, he's right. The only thing I can do for Gina now is continue on the mission that brought us here. I owe it to her. Now I know the crucifix is actually the key to a crypt. If I manage to find the Hopi village, I'll be able to enter that sacred crypt. And I'll probably find an explanation for this whole mystery there. So, let's hop to it. Great. I have a good view of the whole area from here. Let's see. It looks like there's a small town over there. I'll go see if I can find someone who knows about the Hopi village. Wow. This place looks like something out of a John Ford movie. You've got your hotel, your sheriff's office, the typical saloon from the Old West, and there's even an old derailed steam-powered locomotive at the end of town. Wait, stop, don't shoot. Who are you and what are you doing in my town? And put up your hand so I can see him. Hey, hold your horses. I come in peace. Look, my name is Brian and I'm a bit lost around here. Can you help me out? Well, okay, I guess you're not lying. Come in and we can chat. So, you say you're lost, huh? Well, maybe you can tell me how you got here then. Well, the truth is, I'm not totally lost. I'm trying to find a Hopi village that used to be inhabited somewhere in this region. I came into this town hoping to find information on its exact location. Hmm, the Hopi village. Are you an archaeologist or something like that? No, I know nothing about archaeology. I need to find it for another reason. You don't look like an archaeologist to tell you the truth. Though I suppose they don't all carry whips and wear hats. Oh, give it a rest, please. Do you know where that Hopi village is or not? This may sound strange, but the history of this town, Douglasville, is very closely related to the history of that Hopi village. Really? In what way? Please explain. Well, it's kind of a long story. Okay, well, here it goes. This village was founded by my great-grandfather, James Theodore Douglas. He was the owner of a gold mine nearby, and in the beginning, Douglasville was nothing more than a mining camp. But it grew bit by bit until turning into a flourishing town. Everyone was prosperous thanks to the huge profits of the mine, and my great-grandfather even got the railroad to run through Douglasville. However, something happened that tragically changed the town's fate. The mine and the mine shafts just kept growing and growing until one of them, the one with the largest vein of gold, bumped into something totally unexpected. The Hopi Village! Really? So what happened? The inevitable. The Indians weren't willing to let white men ravage their lands. And J.T. Douglas wasn't the kind of man who would give up a fortune just because some Indians got in his way. So there was a bloodbath. It looked pretty bad for the Indians. They didn't have much to fight with, and a lot of them died. But then, something amazing changed everything. The Hopi tribe's medicine man came into Douglasville one morning at dawn, stood in the middle of town, and cast a terrible spell on it, the mine, and all the white men that might try to take over Hopi lands. They killed him on the spot but not before the curse took effect. What do you mean by that? What happened? The mine inexplicably ran out of gold overnight, and not one more nugget of gold was ever taken out. The people in town started to catch a strange disease that the doctor couldn't cure. Whole families were driven out of Douglasville in fear, trying to get away from the curse. The final straw was when the train derailed. It went out of control through the town, destroying everything in its path. Its last obstacle was the Douglasville Bank, which it plowed into like a wild buffalo. As you might suspect, J.T. Douglas owned the bank, too. That's where he was sitting in his fancy red French armchair brought in straight from Paris when 50 tons of iron flattened him. Once my great-grandfather had died, the few people left in town were hot on their heels to get out of Douglasville, making it a ghost town. That's a fascinating story. And you say... You're the great-granddaughter of this J.T. Douglas? Yes, I am. By the way, my name is Sushi, Sushi Douglas, and this town is really mine. The deed to it has been passed down from generation to generation until reaching me. 
and I was the first person to use it a year and a half ago. I came here to live with two friends, Kevin and Rutger, but up to then, it was completely abandoned. The three of you live here alone? No way! Wow, Sushi, I can see you're really informed about the history of the region. So, I bet you can indicate the way to the remains of the Hopi village, right? Well, actually, I can't. The mine was sealed when all that stuff I told you about happened, and from the outside, I have absolutely no idea how to reach the Hopi village. So, do you think I could get to the Hopi village by going through the mine? If you knew the directions to follow through the mine shafts, you surely could. Do you know your way through the mine shafts to reach the Hopi village? Me? Not a chance. I've never gone into that old mine. I thought you might have an old map of the mine. No, I don't have any maps of it. Let me think. I guess that if a map exists, it would be in the town bank. Probably inside the safe. Do you really think the mine ran dry because of the Hopi Medicine Man's curse? Well, I neither believe it nor deny it. What I do know is that the mine ran out of gold, even though such a thing seemed totally impossible days before. Not something very normal, don't you think? Why did Kevin, Rucker, and you come live out here? It was my idea. I felt the need for total isolation so I could devote myself to my greatest passion. They had similar concerns. So here we are. So, what's your passion? Computers and the whole world of technology surrounding them. I'm pretty good at it, you know? I'm going to continue on my search. Thanks for all your help. See you later. See ya, and good luck. Whoa, the bank sure is a mess. I see the locomotive really wrecked the place when it derailed and smashed into the bank. This is really run down. Then there's that metallic. Hmm. Okay, I'll take it. Whoa. This light rudimentary it is. Definitely a model from the 19th century. I'd better take the staples that were lying next to the stapler. They look similar to the rivets used by cobblers. It's really old. It'd make for a lovely... I bet this was J.T. Douglas's desk. B.D. Bank of Douglasville, I suppose. Let's see. Way at the end, I see a cell, and <gasps> I can't believe my eyes. There's a dead body. Oh, man. That guy must have been rotting away for a 100 years. I wonder whether that poor devil died inside there, or if he'd already kicked the bucket before they stuck him in there. All right. I don't think anyone will need them to light up the stove. Five nice logs. Hmm, might come in handy. Hi, Sushi. Hi, Brian. How's it going? Did you find out anything? Um, you see, there's something I want to talk to you about. Shoot. It's about the safe in the bank. What about it? I've been sifting around the ruins of the bank, and I didn't find it anywhere. Yeah, well, it wasn't on the upper floor. I believe it was in the basement of the bank. You know, to be on the safe side. The bad thing is, the way into the basement was completely blocked when the locomotive crashed into the building. Hey, there's a dead body inside of a cell in the sheriff's office. Yeah, it's been there for over a century. Who was it? The town doctor. 
Apparently, he was a drunkard, and a kid died because of him. He was in jail waiting for his trial when the train derailed. Don't you think you should take him out and bury him properly? Well, the door was locked, and the way I look at it, that cell is the closest that guy ever got to a grave. I don't think it'd do any good to bury him at this point. And that cell is kind of like having your own pantheon. How could they let him die there in such a cruel way? The sheriff had a key to the cell, and he also died the day the train derailed. Legend has it, someone warned everyone that the train was speeding toward the town out of control with nobody at the helm. The sheriff rode out to where the train was and managed to climb into the driver's cab of the locomotive, but a stroke of bad luck made him fall into the boiler. The guy was burned up alive and failed to stop the train. And as I already told you, due to the derailment, everyone fled town, and nobody even thought about releasing the drunk doctor who had caused the death of a child. Back up. Yes? It's about you. Sure, what is... Well, whatever. I'm gonna... Thanks for... See you later. See ya, and good... I can't imagine the havoc that locomotive wreaked the day it derailed and annihilated everything in its path. Huh. Reminds me of a model I got for Christmas one year. Yep, it's almost exactly alike. There's the smokestack, and to the left is a spout where you fill the water tank, and further to the left is the whistle next to the engineer's cap. I could try to go, I'd almost rather... See what's in here. I think when you move it, the outlet opens to let off steam. That's the wheel used to increase pressure in the boiler. It has no firewood. Well, all right. These logs will make first class fuel. It's ready to light when... I think with one big leap... Possible. I'd have to remove the board. Okay, let's make a real clean Eastwood entrance. The glass is shattered, but you can still read the word saloon. Ha! This is gross. It's covered with mud and reeks like sewage. automatic door opening system. And they say the Old West was wild and dangerous. Well, well, well. This looks like a botanical garden. It's got dirt inside, but nothing has been planted in it. Okay. Maybe I'll find something to plan in it. Oh, it's one of those miniature trees that have become so fashionable. I think they come from Japan. I remember a similar plant from a movie I once saw, and it was carnivorous. Now, I'm not, but I can't waste any time watering them right now. Now, but I can't wait. Every time I... 
Let's see what I find here. It's a sort of shed stocked with a wide range of gardening tools. Seeds, tools, chemicals, that kind of stuff. Let's see. Hmm, these pruning shears may be of use. Hey, hey pal. Hi, who are you? My name's Brian. Brian Basco. I'm Kevin, but everyone calls me Saturn. Nice to meet you, BB. BB? Those are your initials, right? I could just tell you go by BB right away. It was logical, what with your name. Well, to tell you the truth, uh, no one's ever caught. So tell me, BB, you planning on moving to these parts? Have you spoken with Sushi about this? What kind of artist are you? No. No, I, I don't plan on staying. I, I'm just passing through. Oh, well, that's something unusual, isn't it? I mean, not many people come around here just for the heck of it. Well, I'm trying to find the remains of a Hopi village. The old Indian village? Yeah, I've heard of it. Do you have any idea where exactly it might be located? Actually, I don't, which is odd, because I'm quite familiar with the area. I often go out exploring to find raw materials for my inventions, and I've never come across the slightest sign of that Hopi village. Do you know of anyone who could tell me the story of that village? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I think Sushi may have some documents from her great-grandfather. They might mention the Hopi village. Of course, Rutger hasn't got a clue, although you never know. And, uh, Mama Dorita could know something. that story about oh yes the whole town belonged to her then it was passed down from generation to generation and I met sushi on the internet through a chat room we got along real when she proposed the idea of moving away to this town to live at peace with our creative spirits I haven't well he's out of town he told me he was going on an expedition in search of plants and roots when you meet him you'll see what a swell guy he is he joined up with us to move out here so he could devote himself fully to his great passion, botanical gardening. What do you know about Mama Dorita? Well, I've only seen her on one occasion. I got her to give me an appointment to see if she could do something about my lack of inspiration. It didn't work. According to her, I lacked faith. But really, I didn't think swallowing a live spider bathed in coyote brains was gonna solve my problems. Uh, that thing you're working on is totally interesting. This ensemble? I assure you, it's not one of my best works. My inspiration hasn't been up to par lately, you know? I just don't seem to be getting any ideas. This workshop's impressive. I see that besides an artist, you're quite an inventor. Yes, I like to think of myself as a modern-day Leonardo da Vinci. I combine art and science in my creations, because both combined are my whole raison d'etre. I'll let you get a deal. Let's see how in the world this works. Whoa! Hey, what have you done? Get your hands off my catapult. Sorry, I didn't know what it was. Well, the next time you don't know what something is, don't touch it. You wasted a whole unopened bucket of paint. Damn the day I decided to build that catapult. Hey, chill out, dude. I won't touch anything else. I hope not. That is really cool. Saturn is certainly great at do-it-yourself work. The tank is pretty large must hold at least 50 gallons. I bet Saturn is one of those guys who has a set bedtime. This is a small town. 
Nice set. Yes, sirree. I don't know what's inside, but it looks like it might hold gasoline. I swear I've seen that statue somewhere before. I don't see any reason for doing This must have been a supply wagon, because it has some sort of strap attached to an iron ring at the edge. And there are more similar rings at each end of the wagon on both sides. I bet the strap passed through all of those rings over the goods to keep them from moving around on those dusty, bumpy old roads. Okay, I'll cut right next to the iron ring. That way I'll get most of the whole strap. It must be six to eight yards long. I'm sure it'll come in handy. crater is really big. Jeez! Someone's camping down there, right at the edge of the crater. I'll go down and see who it is. Hello? Hey, friend. Hi. Yo! Nah! It's impossible! I can't get them to open the door! Them? Who are they? Damn! You know! Extraterrestrials! Oh, yeah. Huh. Speaking of which, who are you and what are you doing here? Are you looking for them, like me? No, no. Uh, my name's Brian and I'm searching for an old Indian village. Brian? You know the meaning of that name? No, I don't. What is it? I haven't a clue, but my name is Joshua. And it means liberation. That's something to think about, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's real interesting. I know. Well, now that I think about it, they must have sent you here to help make my communication machine work. Really, my friend? No one sent me. Just because you're not conscious of it doesn't mean they didn't bring you here. Either I'm way off here, or just a few days ago, you never would have imagined you'd be here at the foot of this crater, right? Well, that is true, but it's all because of... So, I was right. See? That's how they do things. That's something to think about, isn't it? You wouldn't know where I can find the remains of that Hopi village I'm looking for, would you? The Indian village? No, I don't have the slightest clue. But as soon as I communicate telepathically with Trantor, I can ask. These aliens know everything. So, what brought you here? To this crater, I mean. This is not just any crater. People just blindly believe whatever those so-called modern scientists tell them. They say that the crater was formed by a crashing meteorite that fell here millions and millions of years ago. That's a bunch of baloney, I say. However, I know the truth. The crater was formed when a Trantorian ship landed here. You know, about what you took. Yeah? What door were you... To the dimensional door, but that's why they... And the one on a total... What is... It's all this stuff. I built it myself and christened it with the name Come in Physical. How does it... Basically, the machine is a sort of ampler. It has a keyboard attached with seven buttons to play the seven musical notes. Using my telepathic contacts, 
I have been told that a way to activate the dimensional door is to play a combination of five notes at the frequency revealed only to me. Pretty fascinating, isn't it? Why did you tell me to help you make it run? Is it broken? Yeah, after getting here and setting everything up, I ran into some bad luck. It had hardly been running for an hour when the machine ran out of energy and stopped working. I took off the plate covering the rotor and checked out the battery that makes it spin. But I can't find what's wrong. The battery looks like it's in one piece. I just don't get it. All I can tell is that if the rotor doesn't spin, it doesn't produce energy. And without any energy, the machine is useless hunk of junk. How can I help? Hmm. The thing is, we need energy for the machine. And the energy is produced when the rotor spins. What's that? Each spotlight goes with one when you play the... But the tr what I mean... Well... Whenever... Now why would I want to... Nice device. Nice to. It has seven spotlights in different colors and is connected to the contact machine. Not nice to. It's one of those dirt bikes that'll go just. Nice to. Nice. This model. Now, why would I want to... Nice to... Joshua. Yes? So... This is not just people just... They have to, however... What you mean my... It's a... I use it to... You got... Yeah, unfortunately... You know... Yeah? Forget... Oh. You would I know my feet. Well, when that nice, nice. No, no, I better leave the thing. No, it's connected. It has seven spotlights. It has seven. Sp it's one of those dirt bike. No, I can't take Joshua. This month, I don't think I'd have tell you the truth. Now, why would I want to? You never know about. He seems to but he could act.
It's long and looks very durable. I'm sure I'll use it eventually. I've only got three. I've only got three. Now, why would I want to stay? Yeah, I believe the idea. First, I have to find a way to join the ends. Of course. There we go. Joshua. Yes? I came up with an idea to make your communication machine work. Seriously? That is excellent. Explain it to me, boy. Look, I thought you could place a strap between the back wheel of the motorcycle and the rotor of your machine. Afterward, we rev up the motorcycle's engine and put it into gear. The wheel will pull on the strap as it spins and... Oh, yes. I understand now. Great idea, young man. You're not as dumb as you looked after all. Just one thing. Do you have that strap? I've got it. You'll put it in place, won't you? Oh, yes. That is right up on my alley. Just leave the strap next to the motorcycle, and I'll do it in five minutes. The thing is, right when you talked to me, I had just tuned in a telepathic message from Trantor that I simply must decipher before I forget it. Uh, as you wish, but don't take too long. Well, let's hope he can get this show on the road. I'm dying to check whether my idea works. This, this one. Hmm, this house looks Mexican, and there's a huge guy in the doorway. I don't know, he seems to be keeping guard, but he looks like a nice guy. I'll go talk to him to see what happens. Howdy, partner. What brings you to these parts? What do you want from Mama Dorita? Mama Dorita? No, look, I, I'm searching for the remains of a Hopi village. I know it was around this area somewhere. By the way, my name is Brian. An Indian village? Yeah, Hopi to be exact. Well, I reckon there's an old ghost town called Douglasville, and now there's a bunch of hippies living there. No, I've been through there already. Douglasville is not the town I'm looking for. Thanks anyway, though. Well, pal, I never heard of any other abandoned villages around here. You think Mama Dorita could help me? Sorry, but I doubt it. Mama Dorita helps people with other types of problems. Other types of problems? Yeah, she's in contact with the other side. The other side? You mean she talks to dead people? Yup, she's mastered the arts of voodoo, Susang and Santeria. And she's a healer, too. I'd love to meet her. Maybe she might know something about the Hopi village. No way. Mama Dorita doesn't do that kind of thing. Look for a good archaeologist, pal. I wonder what that... Maybe Mama Dorita... I may be needing... It's made of clay, and it looks handmade. By the look of that bucket, I'd say it hasn't been used for quite a while. Well, well, isn't that unusual? It's got a hole in the middle, like a donut. Okie dokie. I like it. You'd think it was the work of an artist and not just a rock I happened to find on the ground. By the look of that This is the mine that killed Gina. And right when I was starting to... Well, let's not think about that. I've got to concentrate on solving this mystery. I owe it to Gina. If I could move that stone away from the entrance, I might find the Hopi village through the mine. I think it's an oil can. A bit heavy, but it may be of some use to me. Strange, I sure as
friend. What's up, kid? I'd like... I told you that can't be... I'm sorry. When you have other troubles, the ones Mama Dorita can... I see you like... Oh, that's not gum. It's menthol chewing tobacco. I can't resist it. Helps me pass. What did you... Well, I don't... All I can tell you is that I'm... Luckily, Mama Dorita came into my life. Now my only mission... Well... All right. Oh, man! I see Joshua. I'm gonna have to talk. Joshua? Yes? How come you haven't put the strap in place yet? Look, there is one small problem. Logically, I can't put in the strap without taking apart the motorcycle wheel. And I can't take apart the motorcycle wheel because I need a number 10 wrench, which I don't have. Oh, brother. Now I get it. If it's such an idiot. I shouldn't have joined the ends of the strap until I put it on the wheel. The bad thing is, I can't cut the strap again and re-staple it, since it'd be too short. What's worse, I don't have any staples left. Okay, Joshua, don't worry. I'll get us a number 10 wrench and bring it to you. Okay, I trust you, sonny boy. Hey, Saturn. What? Yes. If it's in my pocket. Could you lend me a... Sure. Take it from the set of tools hanging on the wall. Hey, how do you manage? Do you have some... No, it's my... I get the help of Oscar, Mama Dorita's disciple. He's amazingly strong and can move stones that weigh hundreds of pounds all by himself. In exchange for helping me with that, I give him menthol chewing tobacco that Rutger whips up for me. That big powerhouse just loves to chew tobacco, you know? How much? A deal. Let's see. Here on the left are the wrenches. Shoot! Just the one I need is missing, the number 10. Hey, Saturn. What's up now, BB? The number 10 wrench is missing. Impossible. It's got to be... Hey, wait, you're right. I used it before and left it here in my pocket. Here. Kid, your reflexes are shot, you know? Well, don't worry. The wrench must be down there in the street. You just have to go down and get it. Yeah. Thanks, man. I don't see the wrench anywhere. Ugh. I'm afraid I figured out where it is. It's fallen into that disgusting trough. Okay, who's the sucker that's gonna stick his hand in there? Sorry, but I'll have to find some other way to get that out of there, because I am. It's a sanding block. Kevin must have dropped it. All right, better not leave it lying there. I'm sure Kevin will be grateful if I return it to him. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll drop the pot on the trough, and with a bit of luck, the wrench will come flying out. I can't tell if it worked from up here. I need to go down and check.
Great, there's that dumb wrench. It's finally mine. All clean and ready to take to Joshua. Joshua? Yes? I've got the number 10 wrench. Oh, excellent. Leave it by the strap. I'll take care of it right away. But give me five minutes. I was just receiving a telepathic message from Trantor. Oh, all right, whatever. Okay, let's hope Joshua puts my plan into action. Great, now the strap is on. Joshua? Yes? I see you put that strap on. Did you see if the invention works? Sorry, kid. We are out of luck. The motorcycle doesn't have one drop of gas left. Just what I needed. <laughs> Wait, let's not get desperate. We can find some gasoline. That's what I like to see. Initiative. I know you will get it. And with your help, I'll achieve my goal. Polish the stone? Truth is, I think I've got better wit. Yeah, it might hold gasoline, but I have to beg Saturn for it. A Saturn. What? Yes. If it's. Can I take that tank? You. Yes, it's gasoline, but I'm afraid I can't. You see, when we came to this town, we agreed. One was that we didn't even want to hear about money. Nobody buys or sells anything here. What we do is use the noble old system of bartering. If you want something of mine, you have to give me something of yours in exchange. If what you want is a loan of something that's not perishable, no problem. We're just as generous as the next guy. But if it's something you can't return because using it means it will disappear, well, in that case, you have to give something in exchange. And I don't think I have to tell you that's the way it'll work with that tank of gasoline. Okay, I get it. And what might I offer you in exchange for your tank of gas? Hmm, look. One thing has occurred to me. You could give me a piece of art you've made. I love collecting works by other artists, you know. It's quite enriching. A deal. All right, I don't want to give it up, but maybe I can get Saturn to exchange it for the take of gas. Saturn. Hey, Saturn, I brought you a first-rate work of art. It's a small sculpture I've carved in stone. Hmm, what does it portray? What does it portray? Uh, well, it's, uh, it, it portrays the fragility of, of mankind and the savage environment that surrounds us. Oh yeah, that's what I thought. It's a lovely piece and I hate to lose it, but I'd give it to you in exchange for the tank of gas. Well, I really understand the concept and all, and I like it, but it seems like an unfinished work, like a diamond in the rough. Work on it a bit more, and we'll talk. Whatever you say, you're the big artist. Shoot it. Yeah, it's worth trying. Well, it certainly looks a lot nicer. Let's hope Saturn thinks the same. Okay. Let's see if I can get him to trade it for the tank of gas. Saturn! I fixed up the sculpture a bit, and now I think you're really going to be delighted with it. How's this? Museum quality, huh? Hmm. Yes, I can distinguish some softer nuances. The man has evolved. 
His delicacy in the surrounding environment is apparent, but he's trying to camouflage himself by blending in with progress. That's the idea you're trying to convey, am I right? That's exactly it. You understand my ideas perfectly. So, are you interested in it? You can have the sculpture, and I take your gas tank and... No, it still appears to be an incomplete work, like a house without a roof. When you achieve total mastery, we'll talk about the deal. Oh, all right, that's fine. This guy's one hard egg to crack. All right, I don't want to give it up, but if the piece of amber fits in the hole, it might be just what I need to give the stone a more artsy look. Let's try it out. Now it looks really cool. Saturn's really gonna like it now. Okay, let's see if I can make the deal this time around. Saturn. Observe my sculpture now. Thanks to your advice, I think I've created a true masterpiece. What do you think? Oh, the light. The divine element symbolized by light. Of course, in spite of it all, man cannot bear his fragility and needs to create a superior being that gives greater meaning to his existence. That is the point, isn't it? Exactly, you figured it out. Do we have a deal? Hmm, do one thing for me. Place the sculpture in front of the door to the balcony. The sun will become the final element from which man imbibes the light that shelters him. Uh, whatever you say. Yes, truly majestic. Don't move it. That's the perfect spot. Okay, then I get the tank of gas, right? Yes, yes, it's yours. Oh, but there's one thing I forgot to tell you. That isn't any normal, everyday gasoline. It's concentrated gasoline that I make myself. In order for it to work, you have to mix it with water. The formula is simple. For every liter of water, you put in 40 cc's of concentrated gasoline. It is vital for the mixture to be exact. Yeah, and do you have any measuring tubes to calculate the exact amounts? Well, look, there's one small problem. My 40cc measuring tube broke the other day, and I haven't bought a new one yet. But don't worry. Next to the gas tank, there's a one-liter bottle and two measuring tubes. You can use that to make the mixture. If you say so. The tank is finally mine. And the bottle and measuring tubes? Let's see if I can use this to make the mixture right. I'd rather ask Saturn whether I... Hey, Saturn. What? Yes. If it's... Can I take... Go ahead. You can't say no to giving someone... Take all you need. Getting back... Yep. I'm... A all right. To the mark. Exactly one liter of water. Okay, I'll fill it right up to the mark. There you go, 50 cubic centimeters of concentrated gasoline. Done without spilling a drop. It's empty now. Done without spilling a drop. Okay, I'll fill it right up to the mark. There you go, 50 cubic centimeters of concentrated gasoline. Excellent! Now I have exactly 40 cubic centimeters.
Okay, it has just the right dosage, so there shouldn't be any problems. Perfect. Now I've got gas for the motorcycle. Alrighty then, let's fill that tank and see if we can finally implement my plan. Ready, I'll tell Joshua the motorcycle's prepared. Joshua? Yes? Motorcycle has gas now, so let's put the plan in motion. Stupendous, I knew you would not let me down. Let me tell you what we're going to do. I'll take care of starting up the motorcycle. As soon as the wheel starts spinning, go up to the switch on the communication machine, okay? Yeah, sure. Okay, then go stand by the switch. It works! Amazing! We did it, young man. I knew my idea with the strap would work. Hey, it was my idea. Hey, let's forget about that. Now, I need you to help me figure out the combination to open the dimensional door. I need you, kid. Don't fail me now. Well, all right. What do I have to do? Look, I discovered that the spot where I achieved the greatest telepathic communication is down there, in the middle of the crater. I'll go down there, and you push the keys for the musical node. That way, I will receive telepathic signals which will indicate to me whether the combination is correct or not. The only thing that you must remember is that the combination is made up of five different nodes. You understand this, don't you? You cannot repeat the same note twice in any combination either. Got it. Different sets of notes, but without repeating any note twice in a combination of five notes. You are one smart little whippersnapper. Come on, Trantor's people are expecting me. Ready, hit it, Sonny. Here comes Joshua. Let's see how things went. Hey, three of the notes form part of the combination. But only two are in the right position. It's going pretty well. Try once more. Okay, I'll try once more. Come on, I'm going down. There's an intense light covering the center of the crater. I can't see Joshua. Ryan, this is unbelievable. Just amazing, kid. It's remarkable. Farewell. You can't believe all the love I'm taking with me. But what's going on? strange noise stopped and the light disappeared. But I can't find Joshua anywhere. I'm going down into that crater to see what happened. Unbelievable. The only thing Joshua left behind is that black mark on the ground and his telepathic helmet. Oh well, I don't think we'll be seeing Joshua again. I hope wherever he may be, he's resting in, uh, well, that he found what he was looking for. All right, Joshua won't be needing it any longer. The truth is, I doubt this contraption really improves anyone's telepathic powers, and I don't plan on wearing it to test the theory.
That part of the ground must have been exposed to very high temperatures. Wow. The communication machine stopped working. Well, I suppose the motorcycle used up all the gas. Okay, I don't think Joshua will care anymore. Let's see what I find in here. Yeah, this could be really useful. A flashlight that you can attach to your head and a climbing rope. Okay. I don't see anything else I'll be needing. Saturn, I found the answer to your inspirational crisis. Really? What is it? It's a helmet that creates ideas. It stimulates brain activity in an incredible way. You'll see. It'll make hundreds of ideas pop into your mind. Here, put it on. Let's see. Yeah, I can feel something. Oh. Oh. Wow. I've never felt so amazingly inspired in my whole life. I've got to sculpt what will be my greatest work ever. I'm going out right now to get the perfect stone. Thanks, Brian. I really owe you one. No problem, man. And good luck. Now, how about that? In the end, it'll turn out that the helmet actually works. Anyway, I hope Saturn doesn't become like Joshua. Okay, Saturn owes me one anyway. It's very light. I thought it would weigh more. The tank is pretty must hold. All right. To the mark, exactly one liter of water. It's empty now. Okay, I'll fill it right up to the mark. There you go, 50 cubic centimeters of concentrated gasoline. Done, without spilling a drop. It's empty now. Done, without sp Okay, I'll fill it right up to the mark. There you go, 50 cubic. Excellent. Okay, it has just the right dosage, so there shouldn't be any problems. Perfect. Now I've got gas for the motorcycle. For now, I don't know how that would help me. It's used to control the crane located on the central beam in the ceiling. For now, I don't. That is really... It's hanging from the hook on the crane. It's used to... For now, I don't know how... That...
This is a small town. Just one word. It's actually. For now, I don't. For now, I it's hanging. That. There's nothing in the catapult. For now, I don't know. It's undoubtedly... No. Anyway. A big... <laughs> okay. After all... Here's the deal. There we go. Perfect. Now All right. I hope the statue lands in the same spot as the paint bucket. Let it fly. There we go. I hope Saturn doesn't miss the statue. Okay. Ready. It's filled to the brim with water. Okay, I'll empty the oil can into the tank of the locomotive. Hmm, the level of... Okay. Ready. It's f There we go. Hmm, the level of the water tank is really low.
Okay. Ready. It's filled to the brim with... There we go. Let's fill that tank up a bit more. Okay. Ready. There we go. Okay. There we go. Let's fill that tank up a bit more. Yes, careful there. Okay, this is starting to work. Okay, I'll turn the wheel once. I don't want to overdo it with the pressure and make the boiler blow apart while I'm in here. Great, now I think there's enough pressure. I don't think the locomotive is working. Uh, no, I'd better not take any chances. With the locomotive tipped over on its side, anything might happen if the machine started running. I don't think the look, uh, with the locomotive, I'd rather not touch this one. Yes, a burst of steam blasted out. It must have flown out with the steam through the locomotive smokestack. And from the look of it, I bet I know what key it is. I hope the heat from the boiler didn't deform it. I hope the locomotive boiler didn't deform it and it still works. Wonderful, it opened right away. No matter how bad it, nobody deserves to die. All that's left is, which is why it's odd that the thing stinks so bad. Ew, maybe there's a colony of worms living inside its clothing. No way. You may say I'm a bit of a wuss, but I don't care. I'm not putting my hands in that guy's pockets. I don't think I'll take it. If I carry it around, people will think it's me that reeks. I should look around anyway, though, in case there's something I might need. I'll take this bottle of liniment.
Hmm, it contains mint. Okay. There's some medical equipment, but for now I don't see anything I can use. The truth is, like I said, no, you may say I'm not. Great, just what I was expecting. A hole has opened up in the floor leading to the basement of the bank. Here we go, I can use this. Good, I've made, which is where the safe is. It's locked. Okay. Here's the antique safe. Now, let's see who can guess. Not easy to come up with the comp. A couple of abandoned. Nah. I'm not interested. Yeah, here we go. Okay, I guess I'll turn the dial slowly, number by number, so I don't miss the right one. I need to pay close. So the first number in the combination is 85 right. Now... Yes, I've got it! 29 left. Right. Cool. I think the door will open now. Let's see what I can find inside of this thing. Well, there are piles of old documents and a map of the mine. Finally, I found it. Let me look it over. Excellent. The site of the Hopi village is marked. With this map, I'll be able to get through the mine shafts and find my way there. Even if I end up having to re-enter the combination, I think it'd be better to close the safe.
Ah, yeah. These dried tobacco leaves could really come in handy. Yeah, but I'll need... Put tobacco... Yeah, but like... Put tobacco leaves... Yeah, but like... I don't think it... The bottle...